Hey everyone, Dave Keller here with Market Misbehavior. Today we're going to talk about the magnificent seven stocks, those mega cap growth leadership names. Are they getting overheated or just getting started? So one of the key themes in 2023, if not the theme in the financial markets, the dominance of the uh, mega cap growth trade, the leading names like uh, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, uh, NVIDIA, and uh, others just having incredibly strong years with some potential drawdowns during the course of the year, but overall a really strong year and in many ways dwarf the returns of many other sectors and uh, a lot of other parts of the equity space. We had a bit of a reset there at the end of last year, but now uh, after the first week in January, we're right back to where we were at the end of last year with the mega cap, the Magnificent Seven really leading the way higher. Is this just the beginning of uh, further leadership through the course of this year, or are we seeing signs of uh, them becoming a little bit overheated here as we get to late January. We'll look through each of those seven stocks. I'll also talk about one potential swap. I actually have, uh, I call this group Magnificent Seven and Friends. I have eight stocks here. One of them, a new addition. One of them maybe not be in the Magnificent Seven much longer, as was uh, suggested earlier this week. We'll look at all the charts and talk about some of the technical implications of what we've seen so far in January. Before we get to those charts, here's one more thing I want to tell you about. The new year is a really good time to focus on routines. What do you do every day, every week, every month to improve your situational awareness as an investor, to identify potential opportunities and also manage risk? Seeking Alpha provides a quantitative model what they call their quant rating, and I think it's really well done. A lot of the institutional investors that I've worked with always had an alpha model, which is basically a quantitative model. It's a way of looking at the statistical measures that define healthy companies, strong companies, companies most likely to outperform form going forward, then you take all of those factors, you combine them into a model, and then you regularly run it to find companies demonstrating those same characteristics. By scanning for stocks showing strength using the, uh, the quant model on uh, Seeking Alpha, I think you have a good opportunity to identify potential opportunities that could help your portfolio going forward. If you go to marketmisbehavior.com slash Seeking Alpha, you can get a great deal on their premium membership, which gives you access to their, uh, their quantitative model, also all of their scanning tools tools, and also a lot of premium commentary as well. So go to marketmisbehavior.com slash seeking alpha. Start off the new year with a gift to yourself, the gift of better market awareness and a better sense of the opportunities of leading companies. And now let's get back to the charts. So our goal at Market Misbehavior really is to help you understand the market environment, help you make sense of things, and uh, and help you, uh, encourage you to uh, improve your routines and improve, improve the disciplined way that you uh, gather information and make better decisions. And our premium memberships at Market Misbehavior really working closely with uh, with people and uh, and nurturing that growth over time, encouraging them to uh, make better decisions. We got a link in the description below uh, for our premium memberships and what we're trying to do. If you'd like to take the next steps along some of these uh, tools and, uh, and and understand them, them a little better than we're able to get to in a brief YouTube video. But we're starting with what's called a performance table on the Stock Charts platform. Stock Charts is built around chart lists. And here I have eight uh, different stocks. And then I have this other one, uh, this, this chart just called All the Stocks, where I have one chart with the uh, FANG Plus Index from the New York Stock Exchange. And then, uh, and then all the other names mixed in together. You know, just looking at the chart of the FANG Plus Index, and that's this top data series here, you can see what the last 12 months have been. I mean, really a strong, you know, first third to the year, really getting into the summer. Uh, we had sort of this downtrend channel of lower highs and lower lows. And then that changed in really early November coming out of the October low re-exerted itself to the upside, the FANG Plus Index making this nice stepwise motion of higher highs and higher lows. And the relative strength over the last 12 months, just incredibly strong. This really speaks to the dominance of these uh, this particular group of names. Now, if we look down into the list of these eight, these, uh, eight stocks, and I'm gonna look at just the last one week. Netflix obviously reported earnings this week, a nice surprise, really didn't do particularly well based uh, just on solely on their earnings, but it was all about subscriber growth, some of the uh, you know contracts that they've signed, uh, really suggesting optimism or uh, I guess encouraging optimism from investors. Uh, stock gapped higher and finished uh, the week even higher than that. Uh, so that shows you, it really implies that additional buyers are coming in. We'll look at that chart in a minute. So Netflix, uh, the week, up about 18%. Uh, big step down to the next one, Alphabet up 4%, Meta, NVIDIA, and others 
uh, all up about 2.5% or so. If we look at year-to-date returns, you can see NVIDIA still at the top of the list, though, even with Netflix gapping higher. NVIDIA, some of those other uh, semiconductor names like AMD, I mean, this is, I mean, as much of a pure AI play as you can make is go to chip manufacturers. I mean, that's uh, any sort of improvements really are driven by their capabilities. It's, you know, sort of the backbone of the modern economy in a lot of ways. Uh, so NVIDIA up just 23% just year to date, followed by Netflix now up 17% year to date, and Meta also in uh, double digits. One of the cool things you can do um, on stock charts is actually do a relative performance table. So now I'm looking at all of these eight stocks relative to the S&P. And you can see I'm sorting it on year-to-date performance. So NVIDIA outperforming the S&P, because the S&P is up slightly uh, year-to-date, uh, just over tw- around 21%, we'll call it about 15% uh, on a relative basis for Netflix and uh, so on. Now, I haven't mentioned the bottom of this table, but I'll highlight two names that have been underperforming the S&P year-to-date. Apple slightly below. Apple is one of the few magnificent seven stocks that has not broken out yet. It's actually still bumping up against a pretty major resistance level. Tesla, of course, the big outlier. Disappointing week this week. Disappointing earnings. Uh, projections for the year not particularly strong. Underwhelming earnings call. And uh, the stock really getting dinged. Underperforming uh, by almost 30% just year to date, just in the first three weeks in January. Let's look at these charts individually. And we're going to start with meta platforms. And what I'll do is as we go through each of these stocks, we're going to answer those questions. Are they overheated or just getting started? I think what you'll find with some of these names that have already had a pretty good run, from a trend-following perspective, the trends are safe. And just looking at the chart of Meta, you know, most recently, really coming off of the October low from last year, we have a pretty consistent pattern of higher highs and higher lows. That's Charles Dow's basic definition of an uptrend. So what I always encourage people to do with this sort of chart is have a trend-following hat Put that hat on and, 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 for lack of a better way of describing it, staple it to your head or tape it to your head. Don't take that off because what you don't want to do, in my experience, is sell too early, right? Selling too early really stinks. Uh, you know, selling when something's up 20% and then leaving the next 200% on the table feels horrible. And every week as you see that thing claw higher, all you do is think about how you just took profits way too early. So I encourage people, if you do want to take profits, take partial profits and let the rest of it run. Because the way that you outperform over time is trim your losers, let your winners run. Uh, Peter Lynch famously said, if you do the opposite, if you sell your winners and hold your losers, it's kind of like trying to grow a garden and uh, and pulling the flowers and uh, watering the weeds. It's kind of what you're doing there. So make sure you pull the weeds, pull the underperformers, and water your flowers. Make that a nice uh, flower bed of a portfolio. And I think charts like Meta making higher highs and higher lows pretty constructive. So what would tell you that a chart like Meta is changing? Well, we stop that pattern, right? We try to make a higher high and fail. So if we make a little peak here, the next peak is below the previous one. When I say make a new low, that means this most recent swing low went around uh, 360 or so. We break below that on a pullback. So instead of making a higher low, we actually make a lower low. That would tell you things are maybe overextended. A lot of these stocks, particularly at the top of the list, which are the strongest performers here uh, year to date, you're going to find that many of them, if not most of them, are overbought. And that really just suggests that we've had a pretty strong run. Look back at Meta in the first half of 2023, and you can see why being overbought as a long-term signal isn't particularly great. I mean, it doesn't really mean negativity. It means actually that the stock is going up a lot. From a tactical perspective, a lot of times when we're overbought, you can expect a bit of a brief pullback and maybe there's a lower, uh, you know, a a bit of a uh, drawdown, a higher low, a buy on the dips kind of setup uh, to be observed. And a lot of times I would look for a brief uh, pullback to a previous swing low, maybe the 50 day moving average as as an alternate uh, look as well. Also note on the chart of meta, this blue uh, line I've drawn here, that's the resistance from late July, lines up with the resistance in October. We broke above that, broke slightly below that in early December, but then went back higher as we bounced off the 50 day and it's been lights out uptrend from there. The relative strength sloping upwards is probably the most encouraging part of that chart. Chart number two, NVIDIA, and we're going to go quickly through the uh, these next couple because they look very, very similar. Inveta, NVIDIA, just like other uh, leading semiconductor names, having a really uh, strong three-month period. Coming out of the October low, a nice move higher. And just in the new year, this is the relative performance. Look at how it's kind of sideways, kind of in line with the market in December and then just pushes to the upside in January. That's how much it's outperformed the S&P 500 year to date. Same general thinking, right? Higher highs, higher lows. Those are bullish. As long as we pull back and make a higher low, that's encouraging, which means I think there's a lot of room for a name like this to pull back and still be within that basic uh, uptrend pattern. 
Amazon would be number three. Really classic illustration of this breakout technique that I mentioned on Meta. Classic sort of technical uh, implication of this pattern would be you have a base, which is any sort of sideways kind of consolidation pattern. I always tell people anything you can kind of draw a rectangle and it captures most of the price action, that's sort of a basing pattern. Sort of means an equilibrium where buyers and sellers are kind of in agreement about what this thing's worth. And we're just kind of overshooting and undershooting that equilibrium value. What you're looking for in that scenario is the price to break out of that uh, equilibrium and make a new swing high or a new swing low. You can see after setting this resistance level in September of last year in November, we broke out in December, we really pushed higher. In the beginning of January, we pulled back to that same breakout level and that's a technical concept called polarity where resistance becomes support or support becomes resistance. So oftentimes when you have a major peak and then we break out, you look for a pullback to that breakout level around 145. So that retest as support along with the ascending 50 day moving average, really constructive setup suggesting uh, further upside to be had. Microsoft number four, very similar to the previous chart, a breakout, a retest, a number of our retests of that support right to the 50 day breaking out. And so those sorts of setups are the kind of things that suggest to me that these names actually have further to run. And if we do get a pullback, I'm looking for a similar pattern that we saw here in, uh, in early January's, a pullback to an ascending 50 day moving average, a higher low, or at least not undercutting the previous low as a way of establishing a higher foothold, kind of like hiking up a, uh, a mountain and sort of uh, just making progress on the way up, trudging higher and higher. Alphabet's the last one of the pretty constructive charts, I would say. The last two, uh, not so, or last three, uh, a little less so. Um, here we have uh, the October high from last year, lines up with the December peak. We break out. This is a little hammer candle. It's kind of hard to see, but bouncing right off of support and, uh, and pushing upwards. You know, the chart of Google is a good one, or Alphabet is a good way to, uh, to sort of go to the weekly chart. If I look here at the weekly chart of Alphabet, I'm going to draw this line here showing uh, the all-time high. So this is the high from... Uh, late 2021, you can see in early 2022, we retested that resistance right around $150, went all the way down to 85, we'll call it, before retracing 100% of the way back up to those highs. And this week, we finally closed above that 2020-21 high. So uh, Alphabet actually making a new uh, new all-time high this week. So, you know, by looking at the weekly chart, while the daily chart might feel overextended because it's had such a run recently, the weekly chart shows that this may be part of a much larger structure that we're just breaking out of. Now, the trick with something like Alphabet, I would say it's all about follow through. Anytime you hit a key resistance level and break out, the question is, do you hold that breakout level? That breakout immediately becomes, in my mind, uh, a, uh, a stop loss level, right? And as long as we hold that breakout, things are pretty good. If we fail to hold that breakout, if we break that back below 150, that's where I might start to be concerned. So one of the alerts I have set on stock charts is alphabet below 150, at which point I will very much revisit that weekly chart, see if it's still uh, deserving of my capital. Now, Netflix and, uh, and the next three, Netflix, Apple, Tesla, look a little different. The first five charts, very similar, right? Recent breakouts, basing patterns, higher highs, higher lows, a lot of those overbought. I would argue as a trend follower, they're still good charts as long as we keep making higher lows on pullbacks. And the danger zone would be if we fail to hold the 50-day moving average uh, or the 10-week moving average. Now, Netflix is a little different because it just gapped higher. And I think this is one chart that's interesting to highlight for a couple of reasons. Number one, we had the resistance in July. We retested that in November and December and January. Then this week, we finally gapped above 500. And I had an alert set for Netflix over 500 because I thought that would kind of just convince me that we'd cleared that level of resistance and broken to a new high. We gapped higher on earnings, but then what happened afterwards is what's really interesting. I'm going to show a shorter term chart, this one right here, just to show the gap and then additional upside. What's interesting is when you have a price that gaps higher like this, all, while it can be hard to anticipate the gap occurring or you know to guess that that sort of gap is going to be and what level we're going to gap up to, you can really analyze what happens after. Because think about this, overnight... Uh, Netflix went from around 492 to, uh, we'll say it opened at 537, 538, right? So overnight, we revalued this stock up about 50 points. 
But then we traded higher during the course of the day. We settled back down a little bit. The next day we closed even higher. And then uh, Friday session, we closed even higher. So after that gap higher, after we revalued this stock much higher based on further expectations, additional buyers have come in. There's still demand for people wanting to own Netflix, even at these elevated levels. That is a bullish sign when a stock gaps higher and then moves higher. That's, I would argue, what's the most encouraging thing about the chart of uh, Netflix. These last two, not so much encouraging. I would say Apple is one that's still a question mark. A lot of these stocks in the fourth quarter, before they broke out of their bases, I sort of labeled them all as question marks, right? Meaning they could go higher, but I haven't seen enough validation. I think for those first five charts, we have seen that follow through. Even with Netflix, we've seen a validation by a gap higher than a follow through to the upside. Apple has not done so yet. If you look at the resistance around 197, this is in July of last year, we hit that same level about in mid-December. We pulled back to the 200-day. Now we're right back out to that point. Apple has not broken out yet. I'll say that again. Apple has not broken out yet. Now, we did get a bearish divergence in November and December. I didn't mention that in one of the previous uh, charts, but divergences were pretty common in December. But a lot of those names have already now broken to new highs and eliminated or alleviated that divergence. Apple is still kind of diverging. Every time it's testing this resistance, the momentum is getting weaker and weaker. So I'm still not convinced that Apple is a good play here. I would want to see a break above 200, which would basically clear this range. Could set it up as a bit of a cup and handle type of pattern, uh, but I'd want to see a breakout above 200 to get really interested in a chart like that. Now, finally, we have Tesla, really the, the other chart. Jim Cramer this week uh, you know, suggested that Tesla is, is officially uh, relieved of its, uh, of its position in the Magnificent Seven. I don't disagree with that. Tesla is, oh, I mean, really has been uh, sort of an outlier in a lot of ways. I mean, it's, it's, it's certainly part of that mega cap growth uh, universe. But in terms of the type of business, in terms of the model and, and how they are, you know, who they're competing against and what the prospects are and what the implications are, very different model, of course, than some of these uh, mega cap tech and communication services names. Um, so I'm not surprised that Tesla looks different, but I am surprised at how weak this chart has become. You know, back here, I remember talking in uh, sort of mid-November and talking about this uh, trend line and saying, you know what, it looks like we're actually trading high. We're starting to make some gains, but here's the trend line I'm really concerned about. The July high, the September high, the October high lined up really well, and I'd look to see if we can break out. We did briefly break out going into the holidays and uh, right around the new year, it felt like we might hold it, but we did not. So instead of breaking out of resistance and continuing higher, we broke above resistance and failed. We then failed back below the 50 and 200 day moving averages. We then made the crucial disaster of breaking through a series of swing lows. And now the major low, we're making a new eight month low on, uh, on Tesla and the gap lower and then a move lower. So just like Netflix gapping higher and moving higher, you're gapping lower and not seeing a bunch of buyers coming in, pushing the price back into the gap range. We're actually staying well below there. So I think Tesla below 190 is a pretty meager chart. It's oversold right now. It suggests at some point you might get a bounce higher, but just like a lot of these other charts have seen higher highs and higher lows, Tesla unfortunately lower highs and lower lows and that is not an uptrend and certainly why a tesla it looks very much like an outlier and i think deservedly so not a great chart and not a uh, an outperformer by any stretch of the imagination what do you think of these magnificent seven actually eight stocks that i shared with you which do you see as the best opportunity going forward and why make sure you drop a comment below and let me know for market misbehavior i'm dave keller be well stay safe have a good one